لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي السلام عليك يا رسول الله أحسن الله لك العزاء في ولدك الحسين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين أحسن الله لك العزاء في ولدك الحسين السلام عليك يا فاطمة أحسن الله لك العزاء في ولدك الحسين السلام عليك يا أبا محمد الحسن أحسن الله لك العزاء في أخيك الحسين السلام عليك يا مولانا صاحب الزمان أحسن الله لك العزاء في جدك الحسين إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون فإنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون رضا بقضائه وتسليما لأمره اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Brothers and sisters, with these tears is the best time to ask Allah for the Imam's reappearance. اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشف صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Before I begin, may I ask my dear brothers sitting at the back to move forward and come to the front, insha'Allah, with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بالحسين بأبي عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام. May Allah magnify your reward and our reward together for Aza of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Today I hope to speak less on the other aspects, but inshallah more on the Masaib part. But before I get into the Masaib, rather the whole discussion today is on the Masaib of the Ahlul Bayt. Ziyarat Ashura that was recited. It is a dua, it is a ziyara, it is a salam, it is a la'na. It is a tawalla, it is a tabarra. And it is a hamd and it is a shukr. All of these together are inside Ziyarat Ashura. And Ziyarat Ashura is not only to be recited on the day of Ashura. Brothers and sisters, there are maraji' there are ulama who say you have an issue in your life that is bothering you, turn to Ziyarat Ashura. 
Allama Tabatabai even says recite the whole Ziyarat Ashura with hundred la'ana and hundred salams. And a good time to do this is for 40 days straight. And how ideal it would be if we start today till the day of Arba'een. And he also teaches us an easy way of reciting Ziyarat Ashura that will make not only our moment of reciting Ziyarat Husayni, it will make our whole day Husayni, filled with the remembrance of Aba Abdullah al Husayn alayhi salam. He says, in the morning when you wake up, every morning from today onwards, inshallah, when you wake up and you recite your Fajr Salat, at the end, you start the first part of Ziyarat Ashura. Assalamu alayka, ya Aba Abdullah, wa ala. Uh, assalamu alayka, ya Abna Rasulillah. All the way recite to the first la'ana where you get to Allahumma al'an, awwala zalimin, zalama haqqa Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Now, this la'ana needs to be recited hundred times. Allah Taba teaches the students and says, Plan your day in such a way that till the time that you go to bed, you're reciting Lana and you're reciting the Salam. How? Based on your day-to-day -day schedule, we sometimes get a lot of time on our hands when we're driving to work or when we're in our coffee break whenever, or when we're in our lunch break or when we're driving back. When we, whenever we have free time that we're working but our lips can work, our mind can recite, our heart can be connected. Allah Taba Tabai says, keep reciting whenever you get a chance. Allahumma al'an awwala zalim in zalama haqqa muhammadin wa ali muhammad wa akhira tabi'in lahu ala dhalik. Hold the tasbih or hold the counter. Recite it throughout the morning. Keep going till you finish hundred times. And then when you finish hundred times, Inshallah, maybe projected. I personally try and do it till Zohar. I give myself from Fajr to Zohar and say, by Zohar I should finish the La'ana part. When I finish Asr, I start with Assalamu Alaikum Ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah allati hallad bi fina'ik. Alaika minni salamullahi abadam ma baqitu wa baqiya laylu wa nahar. I keep reciting that hundred times whenever I get a, get a chance. I'm driving back to work, back home or if I get a break, I'm just reciting. This doesn't hurt anybody. And you are not preoccupied. You're not taking away from your normal daily routine to do this. You're mixing Imam Hussein's remembrance in your daily routine. Rather breathing the spirit, the Husseini spirit into your day. And for 40 days, imagine if you were to make your day Husseini for 40 days straight from Ashura to Arba'een, how different your life will become. How different. How spiritual. Allah Taba Tabai says, continue that salam till the end of the day. When you get to your bedtime, you have time to recite it. And when it comes, you finish Assalamu alaykum, Assalamu uh, uh, ala al-Husayn wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala awlad al-Husayn wa ala ashab al-Husayn. And then you recite Allahumma khussa anta awwala zalimin billa'ani minni. And then there's the dhikr in the sujood. And you pray your two rakat, salah, and then go to bed. If we said this inshallah, and I urge myself and all my brothers and sisters to try and do this with the niyyah that may Allah hasten the reappearance of our Imam 40 days it's through our crying and weeping to Allah that Allah will hasten the reappearance of the Imam and brothers and sisters in this Ziyarat Ashura you are not only reciting it's not not only as they say laqlaqe zaban it's not just the moving of the lips only, but rather in the meanings of Ziyarat Ashura, we're asking Allah for many things. Out of these many things, in two places specifically, we ask Allah, أَن يَجْعَلَنِي مِنَ الطَالِبِينَ لِثَارِهِ مَعَ إِمَامٍ هُدًا ظَاهِرٍ نَاطِقٍ مِنْهُمْ Or in another place, مَعَامٍ نَاطِقٍ Oh Allah, me from those who will be prepared 
who will be there to extract the revenge from the enemies of Imam al Hussein with and alongside Imam al Mahdi. Brothers and sisters, it's a reminder for ourselves to prepare for our Imam. But two points and then we'll move to Masaib. On one hand, this day, Hada Yawmun Farihat Bihi Alu Ziyadin wa Alu Marwan. This is the day when these enemies, Ali Ziyad and Ali Marwan, the Banu Umayya, celebrated Farihat Bihi. They celebrated and they would celebrate in many ways. And because of their celebrations, the Aima alayhim salam have asked us to distance ourselves from not only them by saying la'na on them, by asking Allah to remove his mercy from them, but to also avoid the actions that they did on these days. One of the ways that the Banu Umayyah celebrated the day of Ashura was by fasting on the day of Ashura. And specifically our Aima have said no fasting on the day of Ashura. Because we don't want to be in the same act. They celebrated and fasted out of celebration. Rather we keep something similar to a fast. We avoid, and the ahkam, the ulama also tell us, avoid eating and drinking and those things that make a fast invalid from Fajr till Asr time. And that's what we call in Urdu and Farsi, faqa. Even in Arabic it's called faqa. This is a mustahab act. It, obviously, it's not a wajib fast or a wajib faqa. No, it's a mustahab. But brothers and sisters, what else did they do on this day? On this day, the Banu Umayyah and Banu, Abba, Banu Umayyah, the Ali Marwan and Ali Ziyad, they would stock up their yearly supplies on the day of Ashura. They would make it a day of earning and gathering and filling up their pantries. And for that reason, the Ahlul Bayt have said, our Shia, who are our lovers, will avoid working and doing anything that is related to the dunya on this day. Keeping away from, taking a break from work, spending the day in the Aza of the Ahlul Bayt. If somebody has to even work, obviously it's makruh, it's not haram. But if they end up having to, then it is advisable that they take that earning of the day or the business that the profit that they've made on that day and set it aside for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Brothers and sisters, this is the culture that the Ahlul Bayt want us to live with. This is a culture. And this is a culture that permeates not only the day of Ashura, it permeates our whole life. Another point that I would like to mention, and we move towards the Masaib. This beautiful ziyarah, ziyarat Ashura, just the first bit. Obviously there is a lana involved and we actually enumerate the general causes of the tragedy of Karbala and specific causes. Out of the specific causes we name them by name. Allahumma al'an bani umayyata qatiba. All of the banu umayya who are involved in this and the banu sufyan. Shimr, Umar ibn Sa'ad. Ibn Ziyad, Ibn Marjana, we name them specifically. But there is something that led to these people doing and committing the tragic acts, the horrific acts on the day of Ashura. Where we say, O oh Allah, remove your mercy from the ones. Assasat asas al dhulmi wal jawri alaykum ahl al bayt. Those who laid the foundations of zulm and jawr and oppression, injustice and oppression on you, Ahlul Bayt. I will leave you to go and research. Who are these individuals who laid the foundations of zulm against Ahlul Bayt? But our hearts go out to Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. When we say salams to Imam Al Hussein, when we say Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. وَعَلَى الْأَرْوَاحِ الَّتِي حَلَّتْ بِفِنَائِكِ Here we are saying our own personal salams to Aba Abdullah and his companions. But then we don't restrict ourselves on this. We don't limit ourselves on this. We say our salams are nothing for you Aba Abdullah. عَلَيْكَ minni Upon you be salamullah. 
my salams are nothing may allah's salams be upon you alaykum minni jami'an salamullah for how long not only the day of ashura abada forever may this salam of allah be upon you and what about me whether i am here or i am not here ma baqitu till the time i am here may allah send his salams upon you but even if i am not on this earth Ma baqitu wa baqiya laylu wa nahar. May this salam continue upon you from Allah, even though I'm not there, but till the time the day is there and the night is there. May the salams continue. And this is the important part. Brothers and sisters, we may leave this dunya, but we can't part with Imam al Hussein. We ask Allah, Oh Allah, I know my life on this earth is limited. Oh Allah, I cannot bid farewell to Imam al Hussein. Oh Allah, Wala ja'alahu Allahu akhir al ahdi minni li ziyaratikum. May Allah not make this opportunity of ziyara and saying salams to you, saying the salams of Allah upon you, my last opportunity to perform ziyara. Brothers and sisters, the connection of a mu'min, this harara fi qulub al mu'mineen, which will never subside, it is through Ziyarat Ashura we mention it. We say, O oh Allah, our salams be upon Imam al Hussein, not our, your salams be upon Imam al Hussein till we are alive, and even if we are not alive, till the day is there and the night is there. O oh Allah, make us with Imam al Hussein. O oh Allah, make me connected to you through Imam al Hussein. Allahumma ja'alni indaka wajihan bil Hussein alayhi salam. Not only in this world, but also in the hereafter. Fid dunya wal akhir. O Allah. There are beautiful things we ask Allah in Ziyarat Ashura. I will quickly mention some and we move forward. Brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continually that we be connected to him through the door of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And we say this, and you say this not only in Ziyarat Ashura, even in Ziyarat al Warith, even in Ziyarat al Arba'in. This one request that we make as a dua to Allah after saying salams and after disassociating ourselves, after seeking bara'a from the enemies, this is one thing we always ask. Oh Allah. Oh Allah, make me with them, be alongside them in this life and the hereafter. In Ziyarat Arba'in you say, فَمَعَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ لَا مَعَ غَيْرِكُمْ Oh Allah, I want to be with them and them alone and not with anybody else. I want to disconnect from everybody else, but I want to connect only with Imam al Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt. And in Ziyarat al Warith, you say, Ayya ja'alani ma'ahum fi dunya wal akhir. Ayya ja'alani ma'akum fi dunya wal akhir. Brothers and sisters, we, what does it mean to be with the Ahl al Bayt? Is it that we ask Ahl al Bayt to come down at our level? Or is it that we ask Allah to raise us to the level of the Ahl al Bayt? We recited this. We said, Oh Allah. I know I am of limited means. I am full of sins. I know my amal are not the most perfect. Oh Allah, I am a weak servant of yours. Oh Allah, I may not be able to connect with you the way you expect me to. I try my best, oh Allah, but I falter. I fall. I make mistakes. But oh Allah, I have one person. I have Hussein. If you can connect me to Hussein, then he will connect me to you. And we ask Allah and we say, وَأَسْأَلُهُ أَن يُبَلِّغَنِي الْمَقَامَ الْمَحْمُودَ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Rasulullah has a place, a high station called Maqam al-Mahmood on the Day of Judgment and the Ahlul Bayt are with him on it. We're asking Allah, O oh Allah, grant me, make me be with Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt on the Maqam al-Mahmood. Aspirations need to be made go up. Our aspirations need to be high. Our hopes to achieve greater heights in spirituality need to be high. Let's not limit ourselves. Oh Allah, when we say this, it's amazing. 
اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا Oh Allah, as I stand here today on the day of Ashura, crying for Imam al Hussein. Allahumma ja'alni fi maqami hadha. Oh Allah, make me somebody in this spot of mind that I'm standing. Mimman tanaluhu minka. Three things. Oh Allah, make three things reach me from you. Three things. Salawatun wa rahmatun wa maghfirah. Oh Allah, I may be deficient. I may be incomplete, but you make me complete through Imam al Hussein on this spot right now. Shower me with your Rahmah. Shower me with your Salawat. Shower me with your Maghfirah. Forgiveness. Ashura is a turning point not only in history, it is in the history of our own lives, it is a turning point. I want to turn and turn back towards Allah. If my life has been on the path of Masiyah, of the Sirat al Mustaqim, today is the day. If a person who does not come throughout the year to the masjid does not participate, at least they make sure they come on the day of Ashura. Why? Because they want to make sure they tell Allah by their actions that, Oh Allah, I may have been away. I may not have come to the masjid. I may have kept away. But today I want to make sure you register me. From those who are on the path of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Brothers and sisters, we say this in Ziyarat Ashura. Laqad azumatir raziyya. Indeed, the tragedy that befell, that befell upon you was great. Wa azumatil musiba tu bika alayna. And this musiba that we feel because of you, bika alayna wa ala jami' ahl al Islam. This is a great tragedy. Not only for us, but all the people of Islam, all Muslims. Not only all Muslims, ala jami'i ahli samawati wal ard. This tragedy is the greatest tragedy on the face of the earth. In the history of humanity, in the history of this earth. What happened on this day, brothers and sisters? What happened? I have little words. I mean, I have no words. But I will take help from the words of the Masum himself, where he recites the Masaib of Imam al Hussein in his own words. And he says, Assalamu ala man samihat nafsahu bi muhjati. Ziyarat al Nahiyah. Assalamu ala man ja'alahu shifa tahta qubbati. Man ja'alal ijabata tahta qubbati. Salams be upon the one who gave his blood of his heart in the way of Allah. Salams be upon the one that Allah has made ijaba and fulfillment of desires under his dome. Salams be upon one that Allah ja'ala shifa'a fi turbate. That Allah has made shifa kept sick in the cureness of the sick in his turba in the khaki shifa. This is Imam al Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is now all alone. His companions are no longer with him. His family members, his brothers, his cousins, his sons have all been martyred. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is now all alone. He calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is in a constant state of munajat. He is constantly calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also calls out to the people and he says, Hal min bin yazubbu an harami rasulillah. Is there a person of ghayra and dignity who will take the protection of the haram of Rasulullah in his hands? Will take the protection of the ladies of the Rasul's family and take them to safety? And we know Ali al Asghar responds to that. And he gets a response instead of water, he gets a, an arrow that slaughters him. Now Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is left alone. He comes to bid farewell to the ladies and when he meets them, the ladies surround him, say, Oh Abba Abdullah, till the time we had everybody, we, we knew till the time we had Abbas, till the time we had you, we know that till the time you are there at the least we are safe. Now that you go away, who is there to protect us? 
مولا آپ چلے جائیں گے تو کون ہے ہمارا امام الحسین gives consolation to the ladies دلاسہ دیتے ہیں سادانیوں کو امام الحسین takes and calls his daughter سکینہ and says سکینہ come here my dear and he looks at سکینہ and says why are you crying my daughter سکینہ he says till the time I'm alive don't cry because it burns my heart میرا کلیجہ آگ ہو جاتا ہے سکینہ تمہارے گریے سے امام الحسین says when I am martyred then you cry because you have a right to cry then but we know when imam is martyred does sakina get the chance to cry or not rather she gets slaps on her faces she gets a taziana whip on her back imam al hussein bids farewell he bids farewell to the ladies he bids farewell to lady sakina he goes towards imam al sajjad alayhi salam Imam al-Sajjad, when he sees his father in this state, he is actually in such a sickness that he can't even get out of bed. But he is so weak. And he sees the Imam in this state that his body is now covered with arrows completely. There is not a single piece of his body that is not covered with an injury. As the Muarrikheen, the historians say that Imam's body was covered with arrow kal kunfuz, like a porcupine. Imam Hussain alayhi salam now comes to bid farewell. He bids farewell to his son. When Imam Sajjad sees him, he says, Oh my aunt Zainab, give me my sword. I will get up and I will defend my father. She says, oh my son, Imam says, oh my son, Allah has kept you for so that the nasl and the progeny of Ali Muhammad continues. You will not go to fight. Allah has not made it wajib on you to fight. Imam al-Sajjad is now on his bed. Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam entrusts him with the secrets of the Imama. He transfers to him those items that he inherited from Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam. And he tells him, oh my son, let this message go out to everybody. And he says, oh my son, let my people know, let those people who this message reaches, that let them not do zulm on any person who does not have a nasir, a helper except Allah. Don't do zulm on anybody who is helpless. Rather not do zulm on anyone at all. But Imam is sending us a message that he was in a state that there was, a, there was not a Nasir to help him. And he was done oppression against him. He was dealt with unjustly. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Now he asks Lady Zainab. He says, oh my sister, it's time for me to head to the battlefield. Give me the old clothing from the chest so that I may cover my body with clothing that is less valuable. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam can't explain this to Lady Zainab why. But whatever he wears, he wears it inside the, the cheap clothing and then he makes he, he makes holes in it and he says at least this is a way that they will refrain from stealing the cloth on my back they will refrain from stealing the dress that I am wearing but brothers and sisters Imam al Hussein, when he is martyred, they take away everything from his body to that extent that even his ring that was not coming out, it was stuck in his finger. They cut his blessed finger to take out the ring from Imam al Hussein. Ajrukum ala Allah. May Allah grant you the reward for your crying over Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Imam al Hussein now goes towards, he rides on his horse. He now goes to the battlefield. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He is now in a state that he is hungry. 
he is thirsty he has lost his family members there is not a single person to stand by him there is nobody to defend him he has been carrying the martyred bodies of the ashab to the camp since morning he has been carrying the, the bodies of his own family members he has even carried the body of Ali and al-Akbar from the battlefield to the camps he has even carried the body of Ali and al-Azhar to his mother I don't know which one was heavier for Imam al Hussein. Was it the body of Ali and al Akbar or was it the body of Ali and al Asr? But Imam al Hussein salam, is now weakened. Blood has flowed from his body. But the, mu the Muarrikhin, the historians say, when this person comes to the battlefield, he fights like a lion. He fights in such a way that enemies try to corner him. They try to gather around him, but he disperses them away. Like locusts run away when you enter a place where locusts are. He makes them farar. He makes them run away. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he is constantly doing munajat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is saying, Oh Allah, look at these people. They invited me. They wrote letters to me. They said, We will defend you. We will help you. But they have betrayed me in this way, Oh Allah. Oh Allah, you bear witness that there is no son of the daughter of your Prophet more than me on this earth right now. But look at how they're treating the progeny of Rasulullah. Imam al Hussein is constantly in munajat with Allah. There comes a time that Imam al Hussein slaughters and kills and sends to the hellfire hundreds, and to an extent, a lot of the army members are now being killed and they're running away from the battlefield. It's a 30,000 army strong, and Imam al Hussein is one person. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam pushes the armies backwards. According to some historians, they even are touching the walls of Kufa. They are going backwards now. But now Umar al Sahad is seeing where is this man getting his energies from. He does not have his Abbas with him, he does not have his Habib with him, he does not have his Muslim ibn Awsaja with him. Imam al Hussein may have looked towards the Furat and said, Abbas, come see my battle. He may have looked at Habib and said, Habib, my friend, wake up. Come and see how a person who is thirsty for three days battles. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is now weakened. There comes a time that Imam al Hussein is now taking a break. He is tired. He is on his horseback. Zuljana is trying to balance Imam from all sides. Imam al Hussein is sitting, but he is bent forward because he has no energy left. Imam is now in a place where he is trying to keep himself aware so that he can ward off the attacks. Suddenly, a person strikes Imam al Hussein with an iron bar on his head. Some even say it was, a, it was a sword. They slice through the iron cap that Imam al Islam was wearing. Imam al Hussein's head starts to bleed. Imam al Hussein he takes his shirt and he tries to keep it dry. But the moment he raises his shirt to wipe off the blood, an arrow comes and hits his forehead. Imam tries to wipe that blood off as well. Suddenly Imam is wiping and a three-pronged arrow from Hormala comes towards the Imam and strikes him in his chest. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is now bleeding heavily. He tries to remove the arrow from the front, but it is stuck. It cannot come out. Imam al Hussein pushes the arrow from the back. Then he pulls it from his behind. <laughs> 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 
yajrukum ala Allah. When this happens, Imam al Hussein's blood starts to flow. As the Muwarrakhin say, Kalmizab. You've probably seen when the rain pours, they have these outlets from the rooftop that let water out. The historians say that the blood from the body of Imam al Hussein was flowing out like the rain flows from a rooftop. It was gushing forth heavily. Imam al Hussein could not even stand and not even sit on the back of the horse anymore. He now is bending forward and hugging the neck and the body of the horse, Suljana. Imam al Hussein is now continuing his munajat with Allah. Time comes that now Imam al Hussein cannot balance on the horse. When time comes that he cannot balance on the horse, there are attacks from all sides. Suljana takes Imam away. He tries to make Imam safe. When Imam comes out of that zone, he cannot stand and he cannot balance anymore on the horseback. He starts to fall to the ground. He says, Bismillah wa billah wa fi sabilillah. In the name of Allah and by the strength of Allah, in the way of Allah and on the millah and nation of Rasulullah, he comes to the ground. The enemies see a body that is full of arrows lying still on the ground. Thul Jannah, according to some reports, is trying to defend Imam al Hussein. But now they want to move forward. Everybody is nudging the other. Shimr says, Omar Saad, Omar Saad says, Nafir bin Hilal. He says, You go, he says, You go, Sinan. They say, You go finish the job. No, wants to, no one wants to come forward. They say, There's one way you can tell if he is alive or not. They say, And Shimr says, Start the attack on his tents right now. <laughs> Imam al Hussein alayhi salam cannot move. But when he hears that the horse is now trampling and running towards the tents of the ladies, he starts to muster his energies and he starts to crawl slowly and gradually towards the tents. If you've been to Karbala, you would see the Qatliga, the place where Imam's head is severed from his body, is away from the place where Imam is buried. The place where Imam is buried is the place Imam fell on the ground. The place where he was murdered is the place where the Qatliga is. Muarrakhin say that Imam started to crawl on his belly towards the tents from the place that he fell towards the place where his Qatliga is. Imam al Hussein, Ajrukum al May Allah give you no crying and no weeping and no sorrow in your life except that of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein, when he sees that they are going towards the tents, he calls out to them, them and says, Waylakum, ya Shi'ata Ali Abi Sufyan, O oh, you Shi'a of Ali Abi Sufyan, in lam takun lakum deen, if you do not have religion, wala takhafun al ma'ad, if you don't fear the hereafter, at least fakunu ahraran fi dunyakum, at least in your life of this dunya, be free people, don't be driven by your life and material possessions. He says, Shimra, I'm still alive right now. Ask your army to come back and stay away from my ladies and family till I am alive. Shimra calls back his, back, calls back his horses, calls back his soldiers. Imam al Hussein now is out of energy and he is now lying flat on the ground. Imam al Hussein salam, cannot move anymore. <laughs> the words of Imam Sahib al-Zaman in Ziyarat al-Nahiyya describe how this situation unfolds. Imam Sahib al-Zaman, he describes the situation and he says, Imam is lying on the ground and there is nobody coming towards him. They don't want to be involved in the final deal, in the final act of severing the blessed head of Imam al-Hussein. 
On one hand, historians tell us that Lady Zainab is now coming on Tillay Zainabiya. On that small hillock that is close to the tents that she could see the whole battlefield very clearly. She rises when Imam al Hussein sees her on the Tillay Zainabiya. He says, sister, go back please inside. And, and when she comes there, she sees Imam al Hussein alayhi salam lying on the ground bleeding. And she calls out to Umar Asad, Amafikum Muslim. There is, isn't there a Muslim amongst you? Isn't there a person who calls himself or acts like a Muslim amongst you? You have the son of the daughter of your prophet on the ground bleeding. And you have people wanting to kill them, to kill him, but you are watching. She says, Oh Umar Asad, what's wrong with you? The son of the daughter of Rasulullah is being killed and you're watching. Lady Zainab goes back to the tents according to the orders of Imam al Hussein. But there are some few moments left that Imam al Hussein is now breathing slowly. Imam Sahib al Zaman now narrates this that out of all people, nobody would come forward. Eventually, Shimr Mal'oon decides to do the act and to come forward. Shimr walks towards Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how I will say this, but Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is lying on the ground. Shimr walks towards Imam, he has his sword and his dagger with him. Shimr comes and Imam is lying flat on the, on the ground. Imam Sahib Zaman says, Wa Shimrun Jalisun ala sadri. Shimr comes and sits on Imam's chest. Mule and Sahibu ala nahri. He takes his word and he places it. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmer places a sword. He puts his sword on the neck of Imam al Hussein. Imam, when he feels heaviness on his chest, he opens his eyes and he sees Shimmer. And he sees, and Imam Sahib Zaman continues and he says, he locks his fingers in the hair and the beard of Imam al Hussein. <laughs> He starts to slaughter him, <laughs> He's hard. He slaughters. He hits hard. Eventually, Imam's breathing stops, and the red, and the head of Imam is raised on the spear. The the ground of Karbala begins to shake. There is an adab coming their way. Jibreel calls out, Allah qad qutil al Hussein bi Karbala. Allah qad zubih al Hussein bi Karbala. Matam al Hussein. Matam al Hussein, ya Hussein.